coming up on today's show. Lucid unveils the production version of the Air Sedan, and while it's a great looker, it's also pretty expensive. Nikola Motor and GM announce that GM will help Nikola build its future vehicles a few days before Nikola Motors finds itself the subject of the Hindenburg report. No, I'm not joking. And there's a meeting of minds as a Volkswagen CEO Herbert Diaz and Elon Musk meet, and Musk drives an ID3 for the very first time. These stories and more coming next. Welcome back to another roundup in the world of cleaner, greener, safer, and smarter transportation. Thanks for joining me. If I look a little exhausted and dishevelled, it's because of the insane wildfires happening in my home state of Oregon, USA right now. Our home is currently safe, but family members have been evacuated here from the shadow of what is now the largest wildfire in the world, and our week has been spent trying to keep our family and our land safe. It's truly the scariest natural disaster I've witnessed firsthand, and it shows that it's really time to act now to change the impact that we have on the planet we live on. Or else, game over. As always, thanks to the Electric Auto Association for their sponsorship of today's show. Find out how to join them and how to accelerate the switch to electric today by going to electricauto.org. Midweek, Lucid finally revealed the production version of its Air Sedan. Smaller in size than both a Tesla Model S and a Porsche Taycan, the high-end luxury EV currently promises the longest range of any car on sale, the quickest quarter mile, and the fastest DC quick charge capability. But rather than set out to produce a car that achieved all of those things in particular, Lucid CEO Peter Rawlinson is keen to point out that Lucid's primary goal has always been efficiency, with a super-efficient, ultra-compact integrated motor, drivetrain and inverter packaged in just one unit, as well as super aerodynamic design and high-tech efficient lighting. The first Lucid Air will launch next year will cost upwards of $169,000 US dollars, but eventually, Lucid plans a sub $80,000 car. Keep your eyes peeled for an interview with both Peter Rawlinson of Lucid's and Lucid's VP of Design, Derek Jenkins, in the coming week. I had planned to produce it for Thursday, but wildfires. As Tesla readies itself for its rescheduled joint annual shareholder meeting and investor battery day, Elon Musk made a very simple tweet that caused the Tesla fan world to explode. Quote, many exciting things will be unveiled on Battery Day, 9.22, said Musk. And while he didn't go into any specifics, the internet has definitely filled in the blanks. In addition to what was already expected, Tesla's Roadrunner battery cell manufacturing system, as well as a more efficient cobalt-free battery cell, many are expecting Tesla updates on the Roadster, which hasn't been given much love of late, as well as a new potential Model S and Model X drivetrain, along with the equivalent of a mild body panel refresh. On this occasion, I'm not going to speculate, but I'm sure that we'll get plenty of news headlines one way or another very soon. After nearly 10 years of production, Nissan announced on World EV Day that it's now produced its half millionth Nissan LEAF. While North American sales of the LEAF have really suffered in recent years, European buyers are still eagerly buying the LEAF in all of its variants. And thus, it's probably not a surprise that the half millionth LEAF to be made rolled off the production line at Nissan's Sunderland production facility. According to the press release accompanying the news, the lucky owner of the car in question lives in Norway, and based on what I can infer, this will be her second LEAF. In its 10 years of production, the LEAF has gone through two main body styles and several more battery pack and drivetrain setups. It's great to see so many affordable electric cars on the road, and I really would like to know what happened to my old 2011 Nissan LEAF in the UK, WJ11 LFR. If you know about it, tell me below. Nikola Motor surprised everyone this week by announcing a, quote, strategic partnership with General Motors that would see GM manufacture both the electric and hydrogen fuel cell variants of the Nikola Badger pickup, as well as provide Nikola with its Ultium battery system, drivetrain and hydrogen fuel cell stacks for use in its vehicles. In exchange, GM will gain an 11% shareholding in Nikola, which does seem a bit bizarre given that, as a consequence of this announcement, it doesn't really appear that Nikola has much in the way of engineering IP that it can offer GM. As some have noted, however, Nikola does plan on building its own hydrogen fueling network in the US, 
which may be one bonus for GM, plus GM gets to see its fuel cell technology used in Class 8 big rigs, without sullying the main brand should anything goes wrong. There is more, though, from Nicola later in the show. Rivian continued its now traditional video update post this week by sharing footage of its pre-production R1T electric pickups being made on its normal Illinois production line. While we won't get to see any production Rivians delivered until next year, these vehicles are essential to the R1T's development as it helps Rivian ensure its production line is operating correctly, all of the components fit together as planned, and that the staff are fully trained to ensure production can ramp up to volume without any hiccups. With Long Way Up due to debut on September 18th on Apple TV+, Plus, a show that heavily features pre-production Rivian R1Ts, I'd expect more Rivian news in the next few weeks. Let's hope that Rivian can meet its new production goals and we'll see them on the road next year. As Volkswagen's smallest electric vehicle to date, the E-Up electric car may not be one you'd expect to be in such high demand that there's a massive waiting list to get one. Uh, but that's exactly what's been happening in Europe for the past few months. Now, the waiting list has gotten so long that Volkswagen has issued a stop on all new orders, with the company saying that it will take approximately 16 months to work through its current order book. Given that many orders come from Germany, where the government is offering up to €9,000 off the price of a new electric car in incentives until the end of 2021, there's some significant worry amongst potential customers that Volkswagen will take so long to fill its order books that they might miss out on the incentives and have to pay more for their car. It's not clear why Volkswagen can't make more in a shorter period of time, but this certainly feels a little like poor planning. Just days after it announced its partnership with General Motors, Nikola Motor became the subject of an absolutely scathing report by Hindenburg Research. And no, the name is just coincidental. The forensic financial research specialist, which Nikola Motor is already vowing to sue and report to the SEC, backs up many allegations made in the last year from various sources that the company is misleading the public and its investors. At the heart of this are claims that the vehicles Nikola had revealed on stage were non-functional vehicles with fuel cells inside, as well as allegations that company founder Trevor Milton had engaged in various fraudulent activities both at Nikola Motor and previous companies. Investors are getting upset with Nikola and there's certainly some compelling evidence to back these claims up. We've not had time to dig into these claims, but do let us know if you'd like us to cover this in the comments below. For as long as the Volkswagen ID3 has been in development, there has been a small but vocal group of Tesla loyals who have tried to dismiss it at every single turn. But this week, I'm guessing they were a little less dismissive than usual, after Tesla CEO Elon Musk got a chance to drive one himself as part of a planned meeting with Volkswagen CEO Herbert Diaz. Diaz, who met Musk from his private jet while Musk was in Germany visiting Giga Berlin, gave Musk a chance to see the ID4 as well as drive the ID3 for himself. And the short video posted to LinkedIn of the exchange looks like Musk enjoyed himself. Of the ID3, Musk had heard noting that, quote, I think for a non-sporty car, it's pretty good. High praise indeed. And yes, Musk also got a sneak peek of that ID4, as I mentioned. For those who wish Tesla could destroy legacy automakers, this exchange is a reminder that Tesla is more interested in getting bums in electric cars. And frankly, so are we. And now, it's time for short shorts. While most of the auto industry outside of Asia seems to have turned their back on the idea of leasing electric car battery packs, Hyundai and SK Innovation announced this week that they intend to work on a new EV battery ecosystem. At the center of it, battery leasing. Tesla often comes under criticism for poor quality control, but usually that's relating to panel gaps and similar flaws. But this week we learn from a series of Model Y owners discovering that what looks like improvised handmade cradles made their way into their car's liquid-cooled condensers. It's not clear why these MacGyvered parts were on customers' cars, but they are. As we reported last week, Volkswagen has been busy delivering its ID3s to dealerships all over Europe. But this week the automaker made sure we knew that it was doing so in as low a carbon footprint as possible. It showcased ID3s being transported by electric train to their designations where possible. 
Despite expectations to the contrary, Tesla was not one of the companies added to the S&P 500 listings this week during its usual adjustments. Its potential for volatile stock swings and questions over zero emission credit sales are thought to be one of the many reasons for this non-inclusion at this time. Uber has followed its rival Lyft in announcing a commitment to zero emission ride sharing, announcing $800 million to help drivers switch to EVs by 2025, and an ultimate goal of being 100% zero emission by 2040. BMW has announced that its Munich plant, which has been undergoing conversion work to make it ready for producing electric cars, is now fully ready to start begin production of the BMW i4. We'll see the car debut later this year, with production due to start pretty soon. In an attempt to make it easier for its citizens to both own and travel by electric car, the Indian government is considering making it compulsory for all company-owned, company-operated petrol stations throughout the country to have EV charging stations as well. That translates to around 69,000 locations. The MG ZS EV is known as one of the most affordable EVs you can buy in Europe, but now it's got a sibling in the form of the MG5 EV, an executive 200-ish mile estate with a post-incentive price tag of around £24,000 sterling. General Motors has detailed more information this week about the wireless battery management system at the heart of its next generation Ultium battery technology system. GM says that the wireless BMS makes it far easier to use those batteries in second life projects without requiring recalibration and rewiring and improves scalability. Volkswagen has signed an agreement with RCS Global to help it improve its transparency in battery raw material supply chains. It aims to ensure all of the raw materials it uses are ethically sourced and do not come from so-called artisan mines, where human rights violations often take place. LG Chem has completed a successful test drone flight of a lithium sulfur battery, which it says could make electric air travel a reality. Lithium sulfur is more than 1.5 times more energy dense than lithium iron. The test flight flew to a massive altitude of 22 kilometers. Porsche is said to be considering an all-electric version of the Porsche Panamera. While the Taycan is not far off the Panamera in terms of size, it's said that these two vehicles would be sold together if an electric Panamera was given the green light. People often complain that electric vehicles aren't really any good in the cold, but the most northern bus company in the world, well north of the Arctic Circle, has ordered 31 electric Volvo buses to replace its existing internal combustion engine fleet. Take that. The Volkswagen ID6, a car that's believed to be the production version of the ID Cross concept car that Volkswagen unveiled a few years ago, has been spotted testing on the roads. The ID6 will be the first Volkswagen EV to be made with three rows of seats. If you live in the United States and you're a Costco member, you might be interested to know that there's currently a lease deal being arranged by the big warehouse store. That means you can get a brand new Chevrolet Bolt EV for less than $200 per month. Audi has confirmed that its RS line of performance cars will eventually be getting a plug-in hybrid drivetrain as part of a move towards a lower emission vehicles. The shift is probably driven as much by regulatory change as a desire to go fully electric, but hey, it is a shift in the right direction. As part of its Lucid Air reveal event on Wednesday, Lucid teased the next vehicle it's going to be working on after the air in its another thing moment. Project Gravity. While we only got a sneak peek, we can confirm that it is an all-electric SUV, and I'm guessing it will share most of its underpinnings with the Lucid Air. And those are your short shorts. There will be more next week. This past Monday, it was Labor Day in the US, a national holiday. And while there are still COVID restrictions on travel in many parts of the US, or at least advice to physically distance yourself, be smart and not go on long road trips, Electrify America thought it would be the perfect time to upgrade some of its high power EV charging stations. The problem? it decided to upgrade more than 500 miles worth of charging corridors at the same time on Monday, which left some EV drivers on the East Coast stranded at charging stations that had been switched off for upgrades. It's bad form from Electrify America, and while it may have made sense from a personnel and engineering point of view, 
it most certainly did not make sense for anyone making road trips that day. In the future, I really hope Electrify America will upgrade in stages to ensure at least some service is offered at every location. And finally, as I'm sure many of you already know, Formula E has a new sibling in the form of Formula Extreme E. But while Formula E focuses on racing in city centres around the world, Extreme E focuses on taking electric car racing to remote parts of the world that are being threatened by climate change. Personally, I do have mixed views about the off-road race series, but I'm assured that Extreme E includes conservation work as part of its remit, ensuring that the places it visits are not harmed by the race series and rather instead are helped. And this week, Formula One legend Lewis Hamilton announced he's formed a team called X44 to compete in the series. While Lewis won't be driving himself, he's made an introductory video to the team and lists the things that X44 hopes to accomplish racing in the series. It's well worth a watch, and if it helps more people open their mind about climate change and its effects on the planet, well, I'm all for it. And on that note, we are done for today. But before I go, I would like to thank the Electric Auto Association for sponsoring today's show. They've been advocating for electric vehicles since 1967, and they firmly believe that our future depends on us making the switch to clean green electric cars today. You can find out how to join, how to become a local EV educator, find local monthly meetups to go to, or find EV owners about making your own switch to electric by going to electricauto.org. I would love it if you'd like, comment and subscribe to this channel if you haven't yet. There are links below. And if you feel able, please consider supporting us. If you already do, you have my deepest gratitude. And if you're unable to support us at this time, just know that interacting with us here on YouTube as well as on social media really helps get the word out about this channel. After a bit of a hiatus, I am pleased to announce that we have a new t-shirt shop up and running with Redbubble, and we're launching it with three Halloween-themed EV t-shirts. So please do check them out by following the link below. Fire permitting, I'll be back next week. But in the meantime, please keep yourself and your loved ones safe, wear a mask, and if you are in an area where there are fires, please make sure you keep your car charged. Keep evolving.